What is going on you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch and it's great to have you back. Last week's video was one of those videos that I was kind of like, hey, I wish I'd done this before. That got me thinking, what else have I not done before that I've been wanting to do for a long time? Any of you who have followed me for a long time, you may know that my first video that I made was for Lab 401 on how to make flipper animations. Now, this video is sketchy. <laughs> it was the first video I'd ever made. I filmed it on my phone. Lighting was terrible. Audio was terrible. There was really very, very few redeeming factors about it. So I figure what better time than now to revisit the subject. I've even got some really cool behind the scenes things that almost no one has seen. I should have done this a long time ago and I'm excited to do it now. So sit back and relax, it's been a long time coming. So a quick little backstory on the talking Sasquatch. Um, really, I came up in the Rogue Master Discord where I asked a ton of questions trying to figure out how to make my own animations. Now in the beginning, there was really no good write up on how to make animations. There were some documents inside the official uh, GitHub, but that was about it. Then a few people from the Rogue Master Discord such as Magic and Curanons, they were asking a ton of questions in the official Discord to Val, who was the original animator for Flipper. Val was able to shed some light on how the animations were actually made, which made a lot of sense, but that information was still not widely available to the general public. So when I decided I wanted to make an animation, I had to go and beg these guys to tell me all the information they had gathered so far. Now, they were gracious enough to walk me through the entire process and handhold the entire way. It was amazing that they had the patience to put up with me, honestly. So it was kind of a thank you to those guys for being so patient. I went ahead and wrote up a tutorial on how to make animations. This tutorial is still being used every single day by people wanting to make animations on their flipper. It's still kind of the book on how to write animations. Now that book is actually what caught Uber Guido's attention and that's when he brought me into the Lab 401 project where I made my first video. So yeah, if it wasn't for that one tutorial I wrote up, none of this would have ever happened. All right, so that's enough backstory. Let's get into it. Let me show you how it all works. So the very first thing you need is an animation. I kind of breezed over that in the Lab 401 video because of lack of time. They didn't want a 25 minute long tutorial on how to make animations. So I just showed that I had some frames made up, but I never showed you how I made those. So let's switch on over the desktop and I'll show you some behind the scene footage of exactly how those were made. So this is my animation folder. This is basically where everything that I ever made lives in one form or another. So I was never very good at actually drawing. Um, Curanons makes fantastic pixel art. But what I started doing was actually using sprites. So we can see here some of the sprites and things I downloaded. So right here is, these are all, remember how small these images actually are, but here's some Cloud Goku sprites that I was working on trying to use. Now these ones never actually made the cut, but you can see I've got a huge, huge folder full of all sorts of assets. This is literally every asset from Terraria. I actually used the clouds from Terraria in a couple of my animation. So let's go back and let's pull up, uh, let's go for Flying Goku one. What was that called? Oh yeah, Flying, here we go, boom. And let's open this up in, I believe this is the latest one, and in Photoshop. All right, and here it is in all of its glory. This is basically what my animations look like. You can see the clouds in the background and you've got actually a color Goku in the foreground. Believe it or not, yeah, a lot of my animations do have color sprites and I just let the actual compiler dither them and change the colors to black and white for me. So we can go ahead and press play and you can see how everything kind of works. Play, there we go. Uh, the clouds in the background are actually a loop. So if I show these two layers, whoops, let me pause it first. And then the way I actually had it set up is back before I removed the top layer, you can see I added a frame in which shows the exact framing for the flipper itself and exactly how the animation loops. Now, I really liked making animations that either had a story to them or at least a nice loop because I just thought it made it look like a lot more polished than just having an animation that plays through then repeats over and over again. So this animation has two separate layers, basically the motion of the Cloud Goku and then this, the clouds in the background. Let me show you one other animation which has a little bit more going on as well. So this may also be a familiar animation. This is another one that was used on Rogue Master called Blaster. Uh, I made this one with three separate moving layers to give it a little bit more depth. So if I go ahead and pause this, you can see, basically, I can hide the foreground, 
then we have the background clouds, and then obviously we have the animation playing in the front. So a little bit more complicated. Again, another really nice loop. I was super, super satisfied with this. So I can't really show you exactly how I made all of this because that's pretty complicated as far as Photoshop goes. I mean, it's not crazy complicated, but you're gonna have to figure that out on yourself or for yourself for that matter. Uh, but I can show you how I exported it from here to make it useful for Flipper. So let me show you that. So obviously this is kind of a big animation. It's got way more canvas size than we need. So we can stop that. And all we're gonna do is go to image and then go to canvas size. And then it's 128 by 64. Whoops, 64. Make sure it goes to the middle. And then that's gonna crop it exactly per or perfectly for our animation. Now it's over here. But yeah, this is a perfect representation of the Flipper Zero screen. Welcome. Punch. We can just go ahead and stop this. Now right here, you might notice that I have a transparent background for all the frames. We're gonna need to switch this to white. Otherwise, Photoshop is going to make this a black background. So I'll select all the animation frames and then I'll unhide this white background layer. So from here, we've got, just go to export, render video. Then you just gotta make sure that the document size is set to 128 by 64, which is our resolution. And then because this animation is currently playing at 0.2 seconds per frame, we have to change the frame rate to five FPS. And that's just gonna make sure that everything's the right size, or right size, the right speeds, we get the right number of frames. I've already got a folder for this, so we're just gonna name it frame, and it's going to go from there, render. Now we can go ahead and open up the folder and we have all these fantastic frames right here. Now you may notice that these files are not actually named correctly. So we can go through and actually use a pretty easy program to rename these called Ant Renamer. So we'll hop right on over to the Google and search for Ants. Hello? Eh. Ant Renamer. Go right up to their website and then you can download and install it no problem from there i've already got it installed so i'll just show you how it works so we can go ahead and open up ant renamer and then what we're going to do is go to actions and then enumeration so this is super important right here is it's going to start at frame zero and it's going to use a single digit and then increment by one so basically it's going to be frame underscore zero dot png and so on and so forth so we can go ahead and add our folders, open up animation, go to that and click go. And it's gonna go ahead and rename all of our files in the correct format for us. It's that simple. Now I know doing all this in Photoshop isn't for everyone, but there's another way to do this. It's actually the way I first did it. So let me take you on over to EasyGIF and we'll show you the easy way. So the easiest way to make an animation is to find an animated GIF that you like and then work with that. So here we have a stick fight animation that I remember from the early 2000s. This thing was epic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna borrow this. I'm gonna go to copy image address and we're gonna load up easy GIF. Easy GIF. And let's check this out. Whoops, that's not right. Easy GIF. There we go. Open that up. So the first step I always like to do is crop. So we can paste our image name right there and then it's going to load this up. So yeah, basically from here, we want to have a two to one because it's 128 by 64. So this is going to be our frame. Now you'll notice with this animation that there's this black line that kind of bounces up and down. It's very distracting, I found. So basically I try to put it so that's right at the bottom. You can frame things however you want to, but because this has kind of an action sequence, I tried to frame it in a way that was a little bit more visible. So once we have it framed the way we want to, we can just go down to crop image, and this is gonna crop it to the right size. So we can go through and do that as well. Now, another thing that we've run into is that this has 256 frames. This is entirely too long. I try to keep my animations in the sub 60 frame range. I know the first time I made this animation, it was over a hundred and it caused substantial lag issues and all sorts of bad stuff. So let me uh, make it a little bit shorter so that it's gonna work a little better. So let's click on cut right over here and it's gonna let us change the, basically cut the end of this thing off. So let's change this down to 100 frames, cut duration, and let's see how this looks. So yeah, this came out perfectly, and I kind of remembered about where I made the frames last time, because this effectively kind of looks like a loop, and again, I love me some loops. So I had mentioned before that we're still at 97 frames, which is a lot. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go to optimize, 
And then we're just gonna remove every second frame and click optimize and see what that looks like. So that still seems to be relatively okay, but obviously it runs a little fast. Go down to speed, drop our speed down to 50%, change speed and see what this looks like. Little janky, change it to 75, change speed. And that's not too bad. Now keep in mind the refresh rate of the flipper screen is not for particularly fantastic. So if you make stuff that's way too fast, you're gonna find yourself with kind of hard to see stuff. So at this point, I'm actually gonna go back to resize because I kind of like the way it looks. Well, actually, no, let me go back to crop is what I meant. I'm gonna make this a little smaller because it's gonna make it a little bit bigger on the screen. This is always a struggle when it comes to optimizing GIFs or GIFs, I keep doing that, but you gotta figure out how it's best gonna look on the flipper screen itself. So let's bring it down to about here. I think that'll look great. So go to crop image. So now we've got something that's got 50 frames got a nice little loop to it so it's super workable so from there we can go into effects and then we can either switch it to grayscale or monochrome now obviously flipper only plays things that are one bit or either black or not black so if we switch to this to monochrome it's going to give us a really good representation of what things might look like on the flipper now since this is a monochrome black and white animation it actually works out pretty well but you'll notice right here you get some weird color artifacts and things like that like right there um that's because it's kind of an optimized gif so if we go to unoptimize first and then go back to monochrome it'll actually clean up a lot of that ugliness yeah see way better now so yeah, you can see kind of how this process works with a really simple black and white image. It's really easy to actually borrow animations from other things, like there are keyboards that have 128 by 64 OLED displays. You can borrow those animations, run them through the same process, and basically they work right out the box, which is really cool. So let's do something a little bit more complicated. Let me find an actual GIF that we can convert. It's gonna be a little bit harder to work with, so I can kind of show you some of the tricks that I learned about as far as uh, optimization goes. All right, now that I've picked out a new file again, I always like to start with crop. So I'm going to paste in the URL to my animation. And here we go. It's a cool little fallout one. So let's change this back to two one, make this kind of line up with where we need it to be. Get it looking nice. Let's go a little bigger. There we go. I think that'll work. And let's go ahead and crop image. Looks perfect to me. So we'll notice at the end, there's kind of a weird little, doesn't quite loop right. So let's cut out some last frames and see if we can fix that. Change this to 70. Cut duration. Let's see what this looks like. Ah, that actually works out pretty well. So from here, I'm actually going to resize this. Number of frames, we can work with this for the moment. Well, let's see what happens if we optimize it. Let's drop a frame. So let's remove every second frame. Oh, this is going to work no problem. So change our speed back to about 75%. Eh, let's go to 50. All right, this will work fine. So now we need to optimize it for the flipper. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to resize this right now. 128, 64. Because if we resize it, and then optimize it, it's gonna come out way better. So let's go to effects. We're gonna switch this to grayscale. Um, it's already grayscale, I know, but it's gonna make it a lot easier for us to actually work with this. Uh, any color thing is gonna need to be grayscale anyway, so I mentioned that just as kind of a way to do it. So what I typically like to do is bring the contrast up. So let's go to about 32 is good. I'm gonna bring the brightness down just a little bit. Let's go to negative six is probably fine. And then the lightness, gonna bring the lightness down a little bit. So let's go to like, uh, that's about good there. And then toaster. The toaster filter for some reason seems to give you good thick lines. So let's click apply selected and see how this looks. So this looks pretty good. Let's see if we can get a little bit more separation between the right side with the bottle and the background. It's a little tricky. Again, you gotta find the perfect animations to make good flipper animations. Um, just showing you the workflow, there's a lot of tweaking involved. I've gone through and remade animations over and over and over again because yeah, it, things don't necessarily always come out exactly the way you planned. 
So with a massive amount of poking and prodding, I've kind of come up with this. I think this is probably a happy medium for this animation. It may not be perfect, but it's going to work for the sake of example. Now you can go ahead and select monochrome up here if you want to. However, I have found that the flipper FBT, their actual compression, it does dithering a little bit better than Easy GIF does. So I tend to go on grayscale. I used to do everything, you know, just doing monochrome, but I think this works a lot better. So now we've got a good kind of nicely contrasted black and white animation. We've We've got 35 frames so all we're going to go from here is going to go to split and then output images to png format split the frames and then once we've done that all we have to do is click download frames as zip we'll drop them on the desktop and then we'll just decompress those extract all and might as well give it a real name and we'll just say fallout save open those up and then we can just rename them with ant renamer so let's open ant back up and it should go to actions and then go to enumeration. Now, also very important, you wanna start at zero and then the number of digits has to be one. Otherwise it's gonna basically order them in a way that Flipper's not gonna recognize. So that's pretty important. So we'll click on add folders, go to fallout, okay, and then click go. And you'll see it's gonna rename all these in the right format. Perfect. So from here we can close this and then we need to add a file called meta.txt and that's going to be the file that lets Flipper understand how the animation is supposed to be played. So I just borrowed a meta from another animation I made but it will show you exactly how it works. They're all going to be in the exact same format so we'll open this up and take a look. So you'll notice up here we've got our height and our width. We have no reason to change this for any reason. So here you can see we have passive and active frames. I like to use only passive frames because basically the passive frames will play in a loop indefinitely regardless of what the user does. Now there are also active frames. So the way everything works is Flipper will play the passive frames until user input is detected, such as pressing the back button or coming out of a menu to the main screen. Once either of those two events happen, it will play active frames if you have any selected. And it will play those active frames in as many loops as the active cycle says. So first of all, for the sake of, you know, making things convenient and easy to understand, we see we have 34 frames. It goes from frame zero to frame 34. So I will delete everything after frame 34. Delete all those. So now our meta is going to match kind of the way this whole thing is going to work. Then we need to set our frames to 35 because you'll notice it says 34 down there, but we have a frame zero. So we have 35 frames right now. So as it sits, the way this is going to work is it's going to play these 35 frames over and over and over again in a loop. Again, this is kind of like how I like to make my animation. However, if you did want to use active and passive frames, we could do something like this. So we can make it so that there's say 25 passive frames and then 10 active frames with two active cycles. So what this will do is it will play 25 frames, which is zero through 24 over and over and over again. And then as soon as you press the back button, it's going to play the last 10 frames two times in a row. That's what the active cycles mean. After it's played those last 10 frames twice in a loop, it'll go back to playing the first 25 frames over and over again. Now, I do have some animations such as the Salad Fingers animation where it will play a short loop over and over again until user input is detected. Then it will play the second half of the animation. Where this becomes useful is when the animation is initially loaded, it will only load the passive frames. So if you want to get away with doing a hundred plus frame animation, you can make it work easily by playing a loop in the beginning of say 40 or 30 frames. And then when the user presses the back button or comes out of a menu, it can play the rest of the frames as an active cycle. So the animation will load smoothly, but you can still have a pretty long animation. Now the active cooldown is basically how many times it has to play the passive loop before the active cycle is active again. Meaning, so basically if you go through the passive and active frames and it goes back to the initial passive frames, it'll play those 25 frames twice before you can even activate the active cycle again. It's kind of complicated and kind of hard to wrap your head around it. And honestly, it's one of those things that most people probably aren't that interested in. They just want to make an animation that plays in a loop. So for the sake of this animation, we're just going to go right back to 35. We're not going to have any active frames. We're not going to have any active cycles. 
And then we're going to leave our frame rate at, we'll leave it at six for now and see what it looks like. And the frame rate is just that it's basically how fast the frames are played. If you go 10 or so, it's going to look a little rough and there's going to be some, some weird frame like ghosting because the screen on the flipper has kind of a slower refresh rate because it's LCD and it basically the pixels don't turn on and off instantly so there's a little bit of ghosting if you go really fast uh there are some animations that actually take advantage of that and you can do some cool things so just you know mess around with it and of course duration is just basically how long the animation is going to play no big deal there and then once the duration is over it's going to scroll to the next animation in your manifest which we'll talk about later now you'll see something down here called bubble slots so those are speech bubbles and speech bubbles are basically controlled. Here's one over here from the uh, Rogue Master animation that I made. So it basically gives an X, Y location from it and basically what it's going to say and slash N is a, a line break and then where the little speech bubble like carrot part is going to orient from and then the starting frame and the ending frame. Now. It's kind of not the most popular thing to mess with because they are kind of complicated and it does get very confusing. Um, also, you can only put one bubble in the passive frames for some reason, and then you can have as many as you want in the active slots. Kind of a wacky thing. Now, if you've seen my Rogue Master animation, you'll notice that there's actually multiple speech bubbles in the passive frames. Well, that's because I cheated. Basically, I just made my own fake speech bubbles. So that is a way to get around that if you want to put more than one speech bubble in the passive frames. For now, I don't recommend messing with any of that stuff because it is a pain in the butt and it really doesn't have that much of a payoff. Anyhow, we've got our frame order correct. We've got the right number of frames. The frame order is accurate. Now you can change the frame order to whatever you want. That's how you can make some cool loops and things like that to really optimize the number of frames you have. Also, you'll notice, so on this one, I've got a whole bunch of copied frames on here, which makes the animation feel a lot longer without having to crowd it up with frames. Because remember, it's the number of frames that make the animation load slower, not the number of repeated frames. So I can have uh, this has 90 passive frames, which is fine because I've only got 35 individual frames that are actually getting loaded. So now that we have our meta correct and we have all of our PNGs formatted correctly, all we have to do is convert them to be used by Flipper. So that's going to be a pretty simple process, but there's a few steps to it. So let's take you through that one. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to clone the official GitHub for the Flipper Zero firmware. Yes, you do have to do this. It's the only way the compiler is going to work. So we'll click on the code here, copy this, open up GitHub desktop. It's going to go file, clone repository, click on the URL right there, copy that, paste that right there. And I've already got, let's go to OFW, OFW new because I'm obviously doing this for the sake of the example here. Click clone and wait wait for this for a little while. All righty, so now we're done. So let's just navigate to the folder. I just go to show and explore. This is our official firmware. From here, all we need to do is we're gonna navigate into assets and then dolphin and then external. So this is all of the current animations. You can open them up and you can see just the same as we just made. We have PNGs and we have metas. Let's pop out to desktop and we're gonna grab our fallout, copy and paste it into here. Confirm that we have all our PNGs named correctly and our meta, perfect. And we're going to add it to our manifest. So first thing I always do is actually select this and control C, copy it and then we can go into our manifest. So the manifest right here controls everything for Flipper's animations, and it's basically the playlist that Flipper uses to play animation. So a little lay of the land here. So we have butt hurt levels, minimum and maximum butt hurt. As you may know, the Flipper is kind of made to be like a Tamagotchi style, you know, little e-pet. And it works on butt hurt levels, which means how upset your flipper actually is. If you use the flipper all the time and you use all the different functions, it's going to have a really low butt hurt. However, if you don't use it very often, and you leave it running, it's going to increase your butt hurt levels and it's going to get more and more upset. So if we scroll down here, you'll notice 
like the crying animation that actually shows Flipper crying, that means you have to get all the way up to level eight butt hurt in order for it to even show that. Same thing with boxing and then bad fist. These are all the animations that will only play if you've been neglecting your Flipper and leaving it on. Now for me, I tend to make all my animations with basically infinite butt hurt. It can play it regardless of what you're doing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna delete everything out of here except for one animation, and we're gonna work with those. So that brings us to levels. You have the minimum and maximum level. Official firmware only uses three levels. So this one will play for a level one, a level two, or a level three. So regardless of your flipper's level, it will play anyway. The last variable is weight. Weight is basically how often it's gonna play compared to other animations. So this is a weight three, which is really low. Something that's going to be a weight four, weight five, weight six is going to play more often than something that's weight three. I tend to use weight eight on all of my animations, which is relatively high, and it's going to make sure that my animations play, you know, pretty frequently. I put all the things at the same weight so that every animation has an equal likelihood of playing. So yeah, in order to make it so it's going to actually compile our firmware, we're going to change this. I'm going to just paste the name of our folder. It's very important that the name of the folder is exactly as it shows up right here. Other word, it's just not gonna work. So save this and then we're done with our manifest. This manifest is gonna basically make it so our flipper is only gonna play this animation and then one other. Now there is one animation that is the flipper sitting on the couch animation. This animation is basically a default animation. So if you make a mistake in your manifest, so say I made this say Fallout with an S, it won't play the folder because, you know, obviously that's not a real folder. It's going to make it play just the flipper on the couch animation as kind of a fail safe fallback. So let's make sure we fix this and we can get into compiling. Close this and then um, we can actually delete all these right now. It's not going to matter because, again, we're just doing this to compile stuff. So delete. Uh, we're going to go into here, and one cool little trick you can do is if you press shift, right click, you can actually open PowerShell window right there. So we actually get into the correct folder already. Cool new tricks. Once we're in PowerShell, all we have to do is paste this code, and this will actually compile just the animations for Flipper. So I'll press that right there. It's going to go ahead and download the Windows tool chain since we've only run this once now. And it's going to get to work at compiling our animation. Uh-oh. Looks like we ran into an error. So this is super common. It's going to give this manifest.txt error down at the bottom. That doesn't necessarily mean there's a problem with our manifest. If we scroll up a little bit, it actually says animation fallout got incorrect meta. So this actually means we have a mistake in our meta. So let's find out what happened. Go back into assets and let's go to dolphin, external, fallout, and let's open our meta. So what happened was in the course of filming, I forgot to save the meta file. So this is actually that same like kind of stock meta we did before but it has the wrong numbers on it. I can paste this and then save it, and then it's gonna work properly. So yeah, no matter how many times you do these things, it's really easy to make mistakes. So let's go ahead and run this one more time and see what happens. A few moments later. You'll notice that time it ran much quicker and there's no more errors. So there we go, we've got ourselves an animation. Hooray! So we can close PowerShell. And then I'll just go back to the kind of the root of it all so you can see where the files are located. We're going to open Assets, then Resources, Dolphin. And there's our animation. You can see that it's all in frame.bms. So everything is converted properly. We're good to go. And this is a working manifest that we can use to make it play all of our files on the flipper. So all we need to do now is transfer the files using QFlipper onto the flipper and we're ready to go. Opening up QFlipper, boom, boom. And then here we go. All you gotta do is open up the SD card and then we're gonna go to uh, Dolphin. Where are we at here? Do There we go, Dolphin. And then we can drag both our manifest and our folder right into here. Drop back to the main screen. And then on pretty much every other like custom firmware, you can hold the middle button down. It'll cycle animations on uh, official firmware. You do have to restart it. So we're gonna hold back and left, which is gonna restart. 
And there you go, you can see we've got our animation that we just made. It's not perfect, it could probably use some tweaking, but again, it kind of gives you an idea of how this whole process works. Now it definitely shows you how it dithers, which is where the, the grays are converted into white space with black dots. It's kind of a cool animation, and again, it's just a great example of how this all works. So yeah, it's pretty simple, but yeah, I know it's a long process. It does take some practice to get it done right. I even made a mistake that was not done intentionally. Now, I will warn you, the first time you try to do this, it's probably gonna be a little bit more difficult. Uh, it took me probably a couple hours to get it to work the first time, but if you follow the instructions, and I've got the written instructions that I wrote up down below, which is a little bit easier to take the time with, you'll definitely, definitely get it. I know it's been a long video. I'm glad you hung in with me the entire time, watched me make some mistakes, but again, it shows you how this entire process works. It's not that daunting to do just take your time and you'll get it to work so if you've made any cool animations throw a link down below in the comments i'll check them out show me what you got all right thanks for hanging in there take it easy